Hello, I hope you're doing great. Today, we are going to see how you can use text to speech in your Maui applications. Now, before we continue, please remember to visit fairplay2.pdiacostarica.com, click this Buy Me a Coffee icon, and select a donation of your preference. This will help us keep the videos and products free for you. So let's go to Visual Studio. You will see that in here, um, I have this piece of code. This piece of code basically allows me to convert some text to audio in my MAUI application. Now, why do I want to do that? There is a term in software named accessibility, which is kind of a synonym for disability inclusion, right? Basically, it's designing your systems in a way that helps everyone use your applications despite their despite the pe person's conditions, right? Um, so, some people uh, may have like uh, problems hearing, right? Uh, maybe not a total loss of hearing, but some uh, reduced hearing capacity. I believe the term is lowered hearing. I, I don't know what's the normal term on that, but you may want to help those persons. So, one of the things that you can do is actually have your application generating audio. So instead of only have text-driven menu items or actions, you may want to have the application sending messages to the device speakers so that the user hears what he's he or she is uh, reading or what needs to be done, etc., etc. right? So that will actually help a lot. How do you do that? How do you do that in Maui? So Maui basically exp um, expose a lot of the classes for the devices. And here you see that this text to speech is basically a class that generates the output. Usually, the MAUI classes are going to be the name of the class with the immediate access to the method or, I mean, and also a dot default dot speak async. Um, I honestly do not know what is the difference between the speak async directly and the default dot speak async. Uh, most of the MAUI classes actually have that. Uh, but what I have seen is that the people doing code, they seem to be recommending to always set the default, to always use the default instead of the direct access to the method. Um, so in this case, you basically do speak async and you pass the text and then you pass the locale. Now, the locale you cannot create it. You actually have to get it from this get locales locales async right and then you can choose one of those and then just pass it in this case i am just um doing a for each and outputting this audio multiple times very important it also receives a cancellation token and it is optional however I usually recommend you always use a cancellation token. Now, if you don't have a cancellation token in here that you can pass, you can do something like say that cancellation token source, cancellation token source, close the end. Okay. And then you can do cancellation 
source dot token you can pass that and then you will be able to do something like this cancellation token source You are able to do a cancel here, cancel, cancellation token source, cancel, and you can set if you want to throw on first exception, you can say yes. So this is basically so that if you want to cancel, for example, if the user uh, changed the page or something like that, you want may want to cancel this. So this code is immediately cancel instead of um, continue executing right so that's one of the ways or that's one of the recommendations to always uh, send the cancellation tokens when the methods requested even if they are optional okay so remember in order to output the audio or to convert the text to audio you basically invoke the text to speech dot default dot speak async you pass the actual audio and then you pass the locale now in my case uh when i was testing this i only received three locales and those were three locales in english with different voices uh i'm not sure if there is support for locales in other languages i'll actually ask the microsoft team and let you know what they tell me about this. Thank you very much and have a great day.